This is the modern A592 road. It's an important A road, linking Windermere with Patterdale. But it hasn't always been that way. 200 years ago, the town of Windermere didn't exist. The main road over the fells ran from Patterdale to Ambleside and was little more than a rough track. In actual fact, there were two passes over these fells and both are still in existence today. Both of them ran from Patterdale over to Ambleside. Both of them climbed to roughly the same height and they're both roughly the same length and they've both been in use since before the 15th century, so they're, they're old pathways. The thing is that whilst most people would know this one, this is, incidentally, this is the Kirkstone, after which Kirkstone Pass is named. And just over there, you just see out the camera there, is the, the road up over Kirkstone Pass. It's a modern road. Whereas the other path is just a boggy track. Between the two passes is Red Screes. It's a four mile long ridge, two and a half thousand feet high, and it splits them off. On the eastern side, we've got Kirkston Pass. On the western side, Scandal Pass. Of course, the key question is, why did Kirkston Pass develop into a modern thoroughfare with an A, an a road with an inn at the top and regularly used by people, whereas Scandale degenerated into just a boggy park. To find the answer to that question, I'm going to take a walk from Ambleside up Scandale and on to the top of Red Screes, where not only do I hope to find some clues as to why this route developed and that one didn't, I also get some stunning views because it's a beautiful day. So why don't you come with me? I'm starting from Ambleside and walking via High Sweden Bridge up to Scandale Bottom, then carrying on up Scandale Pass. At the top of the pass, I'll swing southeast to head for the top of Red Screes. With luck, there'll be glorious views to enjoy before I head back to Ambleside along the very pleasant southwestern ridge. A mile and a half out of Ambleside and the limitations of the Scandale route are becoming all too apparent. This is Scandale Bottom, a one and a quarter mile stretch between High Sweden Bridge and the foot of the pass. And putting it bluntly, it's more than a tad boggy. On either side, evidence of the tree planting scheme intended to reduce runoff from the valley and help to improve the water quality in Windermere. It's early days yet, but I've been told that if only 5% of these trees survive, the scheme will have been a success. Which is a good excuse to pop back every now and then to see. The path might be boggy, but it's fairly level and the walking is very pleasant. There's another branch of this stream just a bit further on and then we'll start to climb Scandale Pass. Um, it's about 500 feet up. Um, it's not too bad a path, it's a bit boggy in places, a bit rocky in places and there will be parts where streamers will cover the, the rocks and the bogs and what have you but um, it's certainly not a place that you'd like to bring a pack horse down in this day and age but um, I'm sure 500 years ago it was a bit more passable nowadays it's just uh, fell walkers that, that do it not uh, horses laden with goods and then I'm glad uh, you're a bit flooded up at Scandale Bottom but uh, I'm glad that bit's over to be honest with you onwards and upwards at the foot of the pass is the sheepfold now some folk would have you believe that this is too elaborate for a sheepfold and it's actually the remains of a ruined inn. 
The idea of an inn at the foot of the pass is logical, but I've not been able to find any documentary evidence, so sheepfold it is, for now. Beyond the gate it's a steady climb, with the summit of Little Heart Crag peeking over the top of the pass. Halfway up and you get the feeling that this route is certainly not backwards friendly. It's a mix of bog and rock with streams flowing across the path. Of course all pack horse routes may have been like this. We are used to smooth modern roads but 500 years ago they simply didn't exist. The route up Kirkston was probably no better. Something else that was the same 500 years ago is the lack of traffic noise. The only sound is that of the wind and the water and it's very relaxing. At the top the official route goes over that ladder style but we're bearing right to avoid a very wet section. Then we go through this gap in the wall to climb just under 1000 feet to the top. It's an ascent which is not without its hazards. This is a, a lovely slope, it's not too steep. It's peat bog mainly, uh, a little bit of rock mixed in. You do have to watch where you put your feet, although it's not steep you're not going to fall off a cliff or anything. I just spent the last 10 minutes helping a lady just down there who had fallen into the peat bog. She was actually trying to avoid what she thought was peat bog, put her foot down um, and the next thing you knew she'd gone over. Um, and indeed I've got a little bit uh, peat boggy as well getting in there to help her up. Uh, bless you, she's, she's quite unharmed. She was going down the fell, okay, um, whereas we're going up and actually it's easier going up than going down, it's easier to slip going down, whatever, you do need to watch where you put your feet, you do need to make sure that your boots are good, she had good boots on to be honest with you, to be fair, and she was well equipped, um, it's just one of these things that happens but you do have to be prepared for it, just because it's a nice grassy field doesn't mean to say there aren't dangers there for you, and then so uh, stunning view over there of, of Brothers Water. We've got sunshine coming, the weather's clearing actually, we, we were told it would, I mean it was cloudy this morning, we were told the cloud would lift, we'd have a nice sunny afternoon, um, and actually that seems to be the case. So hopefully when we get to the top we'll have stunning views, wonderful clear views and we'll be able to look at all the mountains, it'll be super. We'll see you up there. We've got a lovely view of Brothers Water to my left. Two thirds of the way up we cross this old wall and the good news is that the slope is much easier. It's a good easy to see path with the top in sight. And before long I'm at the trig point at the top. It's a few inches off being the highest point but it will do for me. A thousand feet below, the cars making their way up Kirkston Pass look like matchbox toys. Looking north, Middle Dodd, with Brothers Water in the valley beyond, Angletown Pike, some place fell in the background. This is most unusual. I seem to have the top to myself. There is actually one chap just over there by the Ken, uh, but um, I've never actually been up here before when there's been nobody either sitting in the little lunch um, place. There's a little shelter here, wind shelter, where you can have your lunch, or by the Ken, or just milling around by the town. It's remarkable, and it's a beautiful day. And then, and the views, the views are just stunning. Looking southwest. And from left to right we've got Weatherlam, Great Cars, Heart of Fell, Pike of Blisco, Crinkle Crags and Bowfell, Scarfell and Scarfell Pike. 
swinging west to northwest, Great Gable, Pillar, High Style and Dale Head. The Fell in Shadow is Great Rig. The unmistakable outline of Helvellyn to the left there. The Fell bathed in sunlight is St Sunday Crag, with hearts up above Howe laid out below. Looking northeast, far left of shot, Load Pot Hill, Weather Hill and Rest Dodd. Over the top of Cooldale Moor is High Street and Thornthwaite Crag, with the other heart of Fell to the right. A nice shot of Froswick, Ilbell and Yoke there. All in all, stunning mountain views in every direction. And well worth the effort of getting here. After a nice, leisurely lunch, it's time to head back down to Ambleside. But I've one more thing to show you. Actually, Kirkston Pass Inn. It's quite an interesting building. I'm right on the edge here. I've got about five or ten feet, and then it's straight down Kilnshaw Chimney. So, if I look a bit tentative, that's why. Um, the inn used to be a monastery going back 500 years. Um, it was placed on the top of the fell in order to help weary travellers and also for peace and quiet of the people, the monks that lived there. Um, and after the dissolution of the monasteries, it actually reverted to being an inn. It brewed its own beer and it still served travellers. But it went out of, of use. It became dilapidated. I think lack of trade, the amount of traffic that goes over now is considerably more than, than ever went over 200 years ago. It was actually refurbished by the Reverend William Sewell um, from Troutbeck. It was a remarkable character. Priest Sewell, as he was known, was one of Lakeland's forgotten heroes. Not only did he take services at Jesus Church Troutbeck every Sunday for 40 years, but he was also headmaster of Kelsey Grammar School, Ambleside, at the same time. And if, as if that wasn't enough, he kept a herd of cows and helped out the local farmers by assisting with lambing and feeding the newborn lambs. His rescue of the Kirkston Pass Inn came about as a result of the high number of winter fatalities on the pass. He raised money to restore the building and persuaded notable figures such as Wordsworth Coleridge and Thomas De Quinty to contribute. There we are. Oh, I hope you enjoyed that. Super little walk up to Red Screes. I always think so much more preferable to take the long way round or to come up the ridge from Ambleside than the short, spiky uh, clamber up from Kirkston Pass, which is okay, okay it's only a thousand feet, but it's a bit of a bit of a scramble in places. Um, I'm off now. I thoroughly enjoyed today, and all I've got now is a couple of miles down the ridge. I've got views of Coniston, I've got views of Windermere, I've got views of the Dodden Estuary down to the sea today. It's beautiful and clear today, despite the fact the cloud has come back. We had a bit of cloud this morning, it's come back, but never mind. It's dry, it's beautiful weather out here. Why don't you come out and experience it? Enjoy Red Screes and the rest of the Lake District. Until next time, don't forget to subscribe, and until next time, stay safe.